This is tutorial 5, sorry, it's tutorial 15 of uh, my series on uh, making models for trains using GMAX. And I'm starting this tutorial by showing you the model that uh, I made of uh, Letter Kenny and Burtonport Extension Railway Locomotive Number 5. Uh, this was a narrow gauge uh, locomotive, 3 foot gauge for the Irish narrow gauge and it had a four wheel bogey at the front then eight driving wheels and then a four wheel bogey at the back and that was the largest um, tank locomotive ever on the Irish narrow gauge and the reason why I want to show you this is because uh, there are some by now you'll have seen that there's a number of um, uh, you build up a model by uh, creating a series a number of standard primitives and uh, just assembling them together and this is the case with loco number five and if we have a look here in the select objects we can see a whole series of meshes quite a lot of them all individual meshes but they're, none of them are particularly complex perhaps the most complex would be uh, the shape of the arm on the uh, safety valves here and uh, you'll see that the polygon counter there 41 the overall count is uh, just under six and what's five and three quarter thousand five thousand seven hundred fifty and there's a number of things here which uh, this was a 1914 sorry for goodness sake a 2014 1914 2014 update of my original um, 2008 uh, model which was for a much earlier version of trains and I can see a lot of things here which I would do differently now uh, but nevertheless, um, I think it's a good example of how to at least create the impression of um, a tank locomotive. And I think if you can make something like this, you'll be doing very well. Uh, let's have a look at some of the components. The um, uh, sorry, the uh, chimney is 414, and if we look in wireframe, you can see it's quite a complex shape. The dome, less so and frankly now I would seek to eliminate that line you can see there where what well, is essentially a cylinder is joined to the, a bit of a sphere which has been of the same number of sides which has been joined to it on the top uh, what else have we got here 309 look for the base of the um, safety valve instantly the safety valve is only six and you'd think with a spiral like that it'd be about six million but of course it's not actually a spiral what it is is it's a um, couple of planes with a texture put on it to make it look like uh, a long spring there what else have we got well there's some surprisingly large uh, poly counts on things like the knobs the knobs for the handrail 50 and the handrail itself is 156. What else have we got here? We've got springs. Okay. And we've got bearing covers. Actual covers. There is um, the coupling, 33. Yeah, you can see there that the components, but all of these components are just essentially uh, edited versions of some very ordinary standard primitives and you should have no problem in dealing with them. Uh, where the um, effort has gone into also on this is with the textures and I've got um, textures correct on at the moment and if we have a look in the textures and there's quite a lot of them you'll see that there's a number here uh, for example where is it this um, the side if we take select the side <coughs> and we have a look at it there you can see it's just it is an editable poly and if we unwrap it there you'll see that the side is actually quite a large texture now again I wouldn't do it in this way now this is an old model when I was still learning how to do these or you know, trying to come up with ways of doing these and uh, I would now find an alternative way to do this um, but the lining out isn't too bad. I'm not sure on the size of this texture, but you can see the curves aren't too brilliant there. Very pixelated. But you're creating the impression. And overall, the impression I think is quite is quite effective. 
this really does need a complete rebuild if only one of these had survived into preservation they'd be marvellous locomotives but what you can see here the point I want to make here is that if we select the whole um, the whole model and then you can see the center line of all the once I've selected all these is more or less on the X and Y zero uh, but what I'm going to I've got something hidden here on this and just lose those textures and that is the attachment points and I want to show you these so let's go up here to up uh, see there's something hidden because that's I can get rid of that as well unhide all and we get all these rather weird um, uh, points appearing and these are the ones that I mentioned to you before and this one here for example is for the cab front that's the where you attach an interior because you have to make an interior file for these as well um, where you attach the interior file uh, where are we that's bogey one and we've got bogey naught there bogey naught over here and so and then bogey two is up in here there we are you can see underneath and the frames are very simple look there's nothing really fancy there because you're not going to see it see it trains well these attachment points this is where the separate files se separate models that you make for the forward bogey, the rear bogey, by the way if they're the same you can use the same model and you can tell trains to turn this one round so it's facing in the other direction uh, and for the driving bogey, all those driving wheels now this one here, bogey 2, that is the um, uh, where the BR main that we uh, didn't put in but I said it needed to go in I showed you in this model's driving um, uh, bogey model uh, that's where that gets attached that BR main that will be you'll tell it in config sys to basically attach the driving bogey to a point A for attachment full point and then BOG to bogey to and you've got to use those uh, names that's really important there's another aspect to all of this if we go into the top down view Let's do that and make it full screen. Now there is a, a very uh, consistent way in which you have to assemble the loco. In other words, you have the main body and then you have the bogey. See three separate models which are attached to it. And then if you want an interior, you have to make an interior, which is basically the cab controls and all that sort of thing. And making those, I've never done that. But making those so they're all animated and you can drive the train from the cab, you know, it takes a lot of time and you've got to be a lot cleverer than I am because I've never attempted it. And I'm quite happy to run trains as if it was a model railway layout. Um, I'm not one of these ones who likes to get in the cab and play with the um, controls in order to make the uh, train move. So that's the way I've always done it. Um, if you want to find out how to make an animated uh, cab interior which will allow you to drive the train from the cab, the loco from the cab then you'll have to find somebody else to teach you because I don't know how to do it and I'm not really interested in doing it either uh, Not being, I'm, I mean I'm not into flight sims or anything like that either so let's have a look at these bogies because they're really important the way you arrange them so a bog naught okay is down here There it is, a bog, and remember we're looking in top-down view. It's the same as with animation. The way you attach, the way you put in these attachment points, is absolutely critical. It has to be in top-down view, and it has to be in this order. That a bog naught is always the first, the front, and your your loco is always pointing down. Um, so a bog naught is always the one at the front, and then if we look at a bog one, that is here at the back so we go 0, 1, 2 for the driving and if there's more bogies then you go 3, 4, 5 whatever but that would be some locomotive that would be if you had 5 bogies on it uh, so that's really crucial and there's two other very crucial uh, attachment points and that is 
a lin back that's the limit of the model at the back and it's here so that's the back of the loco that's its absolute limit that's where trains will connect the next carriage wagon whatever so that, that tells it where the buffer is and a dot limb front is this one which is there you go there it is which is at the front and is right on the buffer now you've got bits sticking beyond that that's a, okay because this has got a single central center buffer that's the way the Irish narrow gauge often did it and it's certainly the way the Swilly and the County Donegal Railway did it so you've got a single buffer at the front and um, and a, a hook hook coupling to go into the eye of the next buffer if you look at those that buffer there oops and just click away from the point you can see it's actually got a slot there and the other one is meant to come in and connect over to it in fact what will happen because these aren't animated um, they just merge together but it's the point at which they drop and you, you've got to have those two uh, the, the model just won't load if you haven't got alien back alien front um, and what others do you absolutely need well um, if you want to put a driver you know somebody in the cab then um, there he is uh, it actually means that's an attachment point for the driver model that's a separate model again so it's it's in there they're standing on the footplate because it's not just the driver there he is so it's not just the driver it's the fireman as well together and those are two figures and you can um, either use the Oran figures or make your own if you're into poser and all that sort of thing what else can I show you here well there's the smoke from the chimney, a smoke naught, and that will be a uh, an entry in the config text file to show you, tell it what smoke to put out. Uh, down here, we've got more smoke coming out of the out of the joints. Actually, although it says a smoke, it's actually going to be steam coloured because it's steam leaking out of the cylinders there, and you can have steam leaking out from the pipes anywhere you like, from right underneath the loco. Uh, what else have we got? We've got the whistle, a whistle, okay, and we've got steam for the safety valve coming out just a little wisp. That's the fire that's gone mad and it's really blowing off. And here, these are the outside views that you can select, and that's where you place them, more or less. Or you can place them anywhere you like, frankly, put them on the front of the loco if you really dare devil and that's it so that's the attachment points that's the loco uh, once I've made the driving bogey and then I make the leading and trailing bogey if they're different or just the leading bogey and reverse it for the trailing bogey and all you do is you ex and you have to export that and export the driving bogey because they are both dependencies for the loco the loco won't load without the bogeys there and it also won't load if you haven't got the a file and named you know, that is a file not the actual name and if you don't have these attachment points in it just won't work because the train doesn't know what to do with it uh, gosh this is a crude model now looking at it I would definitely change this now for example this lining of the boiler here which is using a well let's have a look over here it's the quickest way isn't it yeah I mean that's a that's a where are we that's a um, uh, that's a texture that I wouldn't make now. The typeface is wrong there. I think the typeface is wrong there. It's the wrong type of lettering. Um, not quite right. This is for the um, smoke box, firebox rather, on the edges there. So you get a false, you get false edging on that as well. That's one of the more complicated shapes, I suppose, as well. Uh, 46 probably is not too bad but that's using a chamfered box that's the only one that you can't really do in GMAX but what you can do is you can spoof it by having a, a box with curved corners and extruding it a rectangle and then basically what you're doing is creating two ends or one end to it there for some reason I never extended the firebox into the footplate so it's a very big footplate and there's no side bunk there should be a side bunkers in there either side because uh, there was coal stored there as well as here 
what else should it have? It should have glass in the spectacle plates. They were gla glazed, not oven or barred. This is a mesh. This mesh rather is a texture. Got a texture on it. Have a look. There we are. It's the texture. Very basic, but it creates the image. You know, it, it really does have the effect that you want. Uh, so there we are. If I now just uh, open something else, I'm not going to save that. If I go up to, let's go up to the Great Western Brawl Gauge. There we are, and let's have a look down here at locomotives. And I've got a few here. There's Prometheus, that's the last thing. Or oh, the Rover, that would appear. Uh, this one was actually quite a problem because it became so big. And you can see here all the different versions that I was running with before I was happy with the final version. Uh, just open this one, and you'll see. Uh, if we go down here. You'll see I've actually taken photographs in. These are from the scrapyard. These were taken on the scrapyard in Swindon. And there's a side uh, diagram of a rover class. That gave me the basics for this. And what I tend to do is I make the whole of that, including the bogies, all in one model, so that I know they're exactly positioned and uh, positioned correctly. And the wheels, the height of the this loco is dependent of course on the tyre of the main of all the wheels being at touching the zero line so that it's as if the zero line is the uh, rail top of the rail that's how you position the locomotive these are evidently well that's a, a width gauge seven foot gauge I've still got bits this is an early when I was still working on the model so you can see I've got all sorts of odds and ends hanging about here I've got a bit of bit of tubing a bit of cylinder because it's I've been using the cylinder quite a lot so it's quicker just to do that and clone it and keep going up to here and telling it the size and all the rest of it once you've got the size then create a couple of them and keep one handy and just keep cloning it here's a chamfered box that I brought in from something else from 3d max or something or you can download them there's, there's always they're always available online basic 3d max models you just import it uh, what else can I show you about this? I tend to start with the main driving wheel and build that and then go and create the other axles and then maybe bring the frame, start making up the frame. The frame, let's have a look, let's eliminate everything else. Let's, oops, let's hide all the unselected and let's have a look at that in wireframe. There you are, it's quite a complex shape. But frankly, if you can follow, if you can trace a plan, the diagram there, to make the shape so it's a spline an editable spline before it's extruded and you're adding in these other splines joining them all together to make that and then you just extrude it and convert it to an editable poly that's going to be quite a big one 408 but you need it and um, not only do you need it but it looks good I think and the uh, you can see there's a lot of um, textures with this including the diagrams cab photograph front photograph uh, which will all be deleted before I export it uh, is there that's that's my ordinary frames I, mean, I wonder what its texture is let's have a quick look at the texture oh my goodness look at that it's got a bit of mottling on it so that means it's one of my later textures because instead of it having in the stand you know one color what I do is I go into Paint Shop Pro and I create the basic uh, colour or decide on basic colour and then I'll overlay so another layer with noise and I'll knock that back so it's showing about 20% and then I'll merge both together and slightly soften them rather than blur them and you get that effect so, you know, it's just a sort of a dappled effect just enough to give it a bit of wear and then all these are I add in separately in the texture. You've got to know what you're doing in Photoshop or PaintShop Pro or something to make textures like this. Don't worry that you can't make them at the moment. Have a go. <laughs> You'll get there. Um, it's not it's not that difficult. Once you've got one, then it's just a question of positioning and getting your in in your photo 
a photo program or if you start off with a drawing program say like um, what am I using I tend to use an old one like um, freehand or something like that it's been dead for a, I don't know, about five or six years or more um, draw plus that's another one that's bit the dust but I've still got I still use but if you can use a 2d drawing program to create these first of all in black and white with this being in white and these being in black grey and then you can use that either as a guide or as a basis of building up your texture but you'll get there it's just a question of developing uh, those particular skills thinking out how you're going to solve the problem and then uh, having a go and on the back of the text you can see now what I've done there is I think if we have a look at that face it's up here the whole of that face is up here there it is I just put in a little bit of that color that mottled and there it is the whole thing just tucked away a, a, a few pixels in the top left hand corner because it just makes life so much easier to keep all the same texture in fact, I'm sure I started off with everything in there and then I took this face and expanded it out so there's Prometheus in its early stages you might think not very early stages but believe me this was early stages but again we're only talking about very simple uh, standard primitives a cylinder okay so we've got something a bit more complicated there which is actually in fact part of a sphere which I just expanded and then edited crushed it down squeezed it from in one direction deleted a whole load of the faces till I've just got that little bit left experiment and you'll get there now there's not much in the way of detail on there because I did eventually build up a lot of detail when I did I found that it wouldn't load into trains because the model was too big so uh, if you do download my um, download Prometheus the rover class broad gauge locomotive you'll find that there's this file and then there's another file which I've tacked onto this one uh, another model which has got all the detail in it the cab detail because I just couldn't get it to display at least I'm not on my machine what's um, what you can also see though is that on this version I've made the driving wheel I've made the one of the um, one of the subsidiary uh, I'm, I take the corner of the bogeys although you've got to treat them as such and uh, so I'm going to finish, I will create the position for all of those and then keep cloning this whole model and using one of the clones to de and then delete all the wheels from, from it and on the other one, another one, I will delete everything except the front bogey with the two axles I think it was and on another one, delete everything except the driving wheels and the axle because there's no, yeah, all the cylinders are internal here so you don't have any um, connecting rods or anything to do and um, which is you know, bonus <laughs> and uh, but it means that they will all be in exactly the correct place so that's the first version of, of rover let's have a look at another of the rover class loco let's have a look that, that was number one uh, and I did that in 2011 in August mm. and I also got up to number six in August so this should be slightly more advanced there we are, there's a lot more of the cab detail in which won't turn, won't show up because um, it's too complex and I've added all the attachment points I've still got the wheels in so I haven't even got to the stage where I'm going to start creating the bogies but they're going to be straightforward because they're just a wheel each side and an axle and I animate them there's no, nothing else to do with these on good old broad gauge logos, everything internal but all this took a fair bit of fiddling about I can show you and um, also there's quite a few more textures been added for specific things um, on the foot plate and uh, some of these have a slight shininess to them like the handrails some of the copper and brass just to make it look nice not too much you don't want it to look like it's just been polished up and uh, so there we are, I hope that explains something or gives you an idea about how you actually put it together once you've created your bogies. Or rather what you should be doing is create the whole model first using as much information as you can gather from books, from photographs, 
some of which you can import into into GMAX to help guide you and give you the correct proportions and keep checking your work all the time and keep saving it in multiple copies all the time um, if we were to have a look at um, those are the cab fittings I had to separate um, from this in order to uh, get it to appear Prometheus cab what are we? Prometheus cab shiny huh. I see I'm going into October 2011 there seven years back or six and a half years back Prometheus that must be one of the earlier ones Rover round handle tender and here's the TS12 version to make sure that's the shad just the shadow file for it and there's the tender which I also made in tenders are pretty straightforward I'm just treating them basically like separate vehicles completely but you can see that I've actually extracted the bogies and we've got the brakes there so there were brakes in the on the tender of the rover class but again it's just a series of standard primitives so uh, I'm going to leave it at that just to give you an idea of what you can produce and uh, I'm not going to add any more about making um, uh, files in GMAX for trains this will be the last tutorial and um, hopefully it's brought it together but what I would invite you to do is to send me comments post, post up comments and requests for other areas uh, which I'll then respond by putting a new tutorial but otherwise I think I've just about reach the end of it uh, I can't think of any other major type of model it really boils down to once you've made it it's all the different types of config text files that you need for importing it into trains uh, I'm just looking through my stuff here tunnels turntables let's have a look at a turntable wagon turntable I'd obviously had a go at in 2013 I can't remember what I did with that you start making models and then you give up or you decide you're not going to now there's a there's actually a texture missing so I'm just going to say continue don't worry about that I'll worry about that if I'm going to do this was one that I was trying to get to work but I couldn't really and it was I might come back to it at some stage it's a Brunel broad gauge is it a broad gauge track and it's a very particular type of layout of track at the stations on the Great Western Railway between London and Bristol and it was designed by Brunel to allow um, first class passengers to have their um, to drive up in their horse-drawn carriage um, driven by their coachman and there will be a flat truck on one of these and uh, the carriage would be pushed on there their road carriage will be pushed on and strapped on and they could either stay in it if they liked um, or transfer to a first class carriage railway carriage which would be here and with a luggage van next to it and they're not connected up and then over here would be a horse box so the horses would go in there the carriage would go on a flat wagon here and a carriage truck and then passengers either stay in their own carriage if they wish to or travel in a railway carriage here and all their luggage will be put in the luggage van and each of them each of the four individual items will be pushed down here onto the um, turntable and then pushed or shunted with a horse railway horse into a little train of four vehicles and that would be added to the next scheduled service to go to London or Bristol and all points in between and you can see these in early layouts uh, of, of Brunel stations and uh, so I was expecting experimenting trying to get that my problem was is I never although I could get this to more or less work I could never really sort out a how is it an individual a porter figure who would act as a locomotive because the limb front and limb back uh, were so close together it just didn't seem to work so I could never actually get a carry if, if I put a vehicle there for um, horses a horse box there and but I had this porter as an engine waiting there I could never get it to work to push it down onto that and then to rotate that and then that would go off and then I'd have to bring the man down here and he'd have to be turned round uh, and somehow he would have to get up behind these so you know I was, got this far and no further uh, so that's what happens sometimes 
Um, so there we are. Don't worry about these things. Uh, there was something else that I showed you which I thought I might just give an illustration as to the sort of things your wild flights of fancy uh, might jump to. Here we are, Crystal Palace. I've got some very good plans for the original Crystal Palace that were in Hyde, that was in Hyde Park. And uh, I tried to make it to scale. I tried to make it as a uh, multiple units. So these these would be made up of all little bits that would just click together. And I gave that up because I found that the train's graphics had a lot of problems looking through gl the glass here uh, and then through other glass. So I gave all that up and I just made these opaque. I mean they look a bit like glass but they're opaque. They're actually very accurate. Uh, they are precise copies of the from the from the actual plans. And this is the Crystal Palace as it appeared more or less. There are some flagpoles and that to go in. But that's the size of the Crystal Palace in Hyde Park. So you can see I have all sorts of wild grandiose ideas. But it is an accurate uh, it is an accurate model of it. Maybe one day it'll creep into trains. I'm not sure. It's, it's also I've got how many polys is it? It won't be that many polys. No, you see, it's only seventeen hundred and seventeen ninety. But it will have quite a few textures. Not too many, but they're quite a size each one of those because you've got, as you can see there, that you've got a new panel one, new panel two. I don't know why I call them that, but I just did. I knew what I was talking about. And it's because you've got all sorts of variations here in the panelling and the doors. Those all look very similar. There we are, I'm just, I'm just disproving myself now. They all look the same. <laughs> no, surely not. There are variations, I know that, because I, I did quite a few of them. Transept panels, things like that. Anyway, and all these are, that's just one uh, plane facing us on all that little, all those tiny, tiny little bits of finial things. That's one plane with top finial repeated again and again and again and again. And this is the correct number. <laughs> that must have been crazy. So there we are. I hope you've um, enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it's given you some ideas. Frankly, um, if you can think, if you can imagine it, you can make it. And if you can imagine it and it didn't exist, then why not make it anyway? But I prefer to make things that did exist. So I tend to make follow prototypes, even if they're as wacky as the Crystal Palace. So there we are, that's the end of this tutorial. Please do subscribe to my channel, it really does help and encourages me to do more of these. And if you have any specific requests for uh, types of models, explanations how you make them rather than how you import them into or export them into trains, which is a whole separate issue altogether, I don't really want to cover. Uh, but if there are specific type of model that you would like me to have a look at and explain in a tutorial, um, then if I've made it, I'm happy to explain it. If I haven't made it, no way. I'll ask him to tell you that. So, thanks for watching.